okay good evening everyone so today is the final tutorial session for this course on social networks so being the last lecture what we'll do is we'll revise uh, some questions some important questions from all the past 12 week uh, tutorial sessions so i picked up few questions from each of the tutorial sessions that i thought would be most important for you most important concepts for you to take away from this course so i'll be discussing those questions so if you have any doubt you can ask me in between or uh, at the end as well and you can also bring up any new quest any other questions that you have or you face difficulty in solving so i'll try to help uh, as best as i can so let's get started i'll share my screen Hello, sir. Uh, yeah. Sir. Yeah, yeah. Sir, Go ahead. Thing is, uh, in our concern assignments, uh, I uh, I had some questions doubts, sir. Can I tell the number so that you can uh, uh, revise that uh, question, or else uh, I, I need to share the screen. Uh, you can post it in the chat box. Uh, so but everyone, can... uh, net, uh, everything the network is also there now for that. Mm -hmm. Even I had tried to solve that, but I get a I have a wrong answer for me. As per my concern uh, calculation, I don't know the exact calculation okay. of that concern network. Uh, okay, okay, so you I'll can read, do. It. I, I'll read out the number of the week, week, uh, week number as well as the question number. Uh, okay, so, so this is. Uh, these are from uh, this year's assignments. Ah, uh, this is uh, this year's assignments. Okay, so then it would be better if you can share the screenshot of it because I uh, right now I don't have access to this year's assignments as of now. So if you when you do that, you either share the screen or you post take a screenshot of the problem and put it in the chat box. Then uh, I'll be able to see it. Okay, sir. Definitely, sir. Definitely. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, so uh, let us get started. So first coming to uh, week one, so I have picked uh, two questions from week one. Uh, so first question is, uh, what is the maximum number of edges that can be present in a graph with 10 nodes? So 10 is, let's say, denotes the number of nodes. So how to solve such a problem is maximum number of edges. So to solve it, so you consider first any any node can be max connected to n minus 1 nodes. So therefore, n nodes will be connected to n into n minus 1 nodes. So th this will be <clears throat> n nodes will be connected to n minus, but in such an assumption, if u v is connected, v u is also connected, and we are counting twice. Therefore, maximum number of edges will be equal to n into n minus 1 over 2 because we are counting it twice. So if n is given as 10, so n is equal to 10, so n into n minus 1 by 2 would be. 10 into 9 by 2, that would be 45. So the right answer is 45. So it, remember this concept that the maximum number of edges in a graph with n nodes is always n into n minus 1 by 2. This is also sometimes written like this, n choose 2. So this is how you pick uh, 
any mm. so you pick any two nodes from a given set of n 10 n nodes so again uh, maximum number of edges so edges always exist between any two nodes u and v so if you have uh, okay so let me show it this way so if you have n uh, nodes let's say these are your n nodes so what you'll have to do to put so the maximum number of edges is basically you'll have to pick when you put an edge between two nodes you're just basically picking out these two nodes so in how many ways you can pick out two nodes from a bunch of n nodes so that is n choose two or n c two you may be comfortable with so both of these are same and they are all equal to n into n minus one by two. So remember this that the maximum number of edges would be n into n minus one by two. Okay, uh, someone is uh, asking uh, what is the maximum possible number of edges in a directed graph having n nodes so that would this is for an undirected graph uh, for a directed graph it really depends on the graph so it's if it is bidirectional then again it would be you just remove the two from the denominator so uv being connected is different from vu being connected so it would be n into n minus one it is uh, fully connected bidirectional graph otherwise uh, it, it would depend on what how the direction is defined in the graph. Coming to the uh, next question, uh, question number then uh, I'll be taking the other questions uh, uh, at when I come to it or at the end of it. So if you have any question, you can keep typing in the uh, chat box. Okay. So coming to the next question. So what is the, the maximum number of graphs that you can possibly generate with 50 nodes? So what they're asking is suppose you have, let's say four nodes how many graphs you can generate so for four nodes you can create one graph like this this is this would be let's say your graph graph one or you can create you could have created something like this this could be your graph two or something let's say like this g3 so what this question is asking that if you have given uh, so here we have considered four nodes so if you are given 50 nodes how many possible graphs can you generate so how many g, so g n so you'll have to find this number and how many num graphs that you can generate with 50 nodes. So to solve this question, we'll refer to the first question again. So maximum. Max number of edges. Would be equal to n into n minus one over two. So let's say let us call this part e so now to create this graph what we have to do so let's say this is we line up the edges like this let's say we call it edge one edge two edge three edge four and this is edge of maximum number of edges that are present. 
So what we'll have to do is for each edge, we either zero means we don't select it and one means we select it. Zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. So for each edge, we take a decision whether to select it or not select it. So how many total permutations it will have is basically you will have two. So because you have two options and two into two into two. So this would be. The total the max number of edges times. So this is basically two to the power mod E and this is basically N over two that N choose two. So the the answer would be two to the power n by two. And in this question, n is 50. So the right answer is option B, two to the power 50 choose two. So this is the number of graphs that you can generate possibly from 50 nodes. Coming to week two. Week two first question. So if there are n nodes with no edges initially, then what is the probability of a node V being isolated after including n log n edges at uniformly at random? So you have. Let's say. N nodes in the graph and at the center of it is your let's say node V. So. For this problem, so uh, total edges max so max edges would be equal to n into n minus one by two and uh, edges connecting to V would be equal to N minus one. So at most N minus one edges can be connected to V. So edges. Number of edges basically. So number of edges. Not. Connected to V. Would be n into n minus 1 by 2 minus n minus 1. So that would be n minus 1 into n minus 2 over 2. So now what is the probability of picking an edge not connected to V would basically be n minus that that is the number of that is the event of picking an edge that is not connected to v so this many n into n minus 1 n minus 1 into n minus 2 over 2 edges are not connected to v so if we pick one of such edges from the total collection of n into n minus 1 over 2 edges then we get the probability so this will basically be n minus 2 over n now uh, we can rewrite this as 1 minus 2 n by 2. Now uh, let's say let's call it p. Now what is the now we are uh, picking we are including edges we are including n log n edges in the graph at random and we are assuming that the edges are added independently edges added independently so probability of of having no connection 
to v would be you just repeat this by independent probability p into p into p so this goes on for n log n times basically this is 1 minus n by 2 to the power n log n we can write it as 1 minus 1 by n by 2 by n by 2 into 2 log n that now when n is large for large n this term in the braces is e to the power minus 1 so e to the power minus 1 to the power uh, 2 log n that would be 1 by e to the power log n whole square that is 1 over n square so this is for large n therefore the probability is 1 over n square so the right answer is option d so th this is the probability with which v will remain isolated that is not connected to any of the other n minus 1 nodes after adding n log n edges uniformly at random and independently of the each other coming to uh, the next question question uh, 5 so here uh, if x equal to the ratio of clustering coefficient of node e to the clustering coefficient of node f what is the value of x so clustering coefficient is basically clustering coefficient is measure of how well the friends of a node are connected so if we take e node e and we look at the friends of e so friends of e are f b and d so we'll have to uh, look at how well uh, this f b and d are connected so if you see from this graph what is this mathematically it is the total number of friendship within the friends of e and to the ratio of total possible friendship so uh, if we write the definition is the number of friendships among friends by total possible friendships so if you so for clustering coefficient of e so let's say this is cc we call it cc of e is basically if we take FBD, what is the number of friendships between FBD? It is one. And what is the total possible friendship that could have existed? So there are three nodes, there. therefore it would be three choose two, which is three itself. So it would be three choose two and it is three. What is the clustering coefficient of F? So F has two neighbors, two friends, E and D. So uh, the total number of friendships that can exist between two of his friends is one. And how maximum exists is one and present is also one. So therefore the clustering coefficient is one. So X would be basically one by three over one. So one by three. So the right answer is one over three. So clustering coefficient is a very important metric in a social network because 
like it has been seen for people having low clustering coefficients even if they have a very large friend large group of friends so it they are more prone to su suicidal tendency so people who commit suicide are seen to have very low clustering coefficients in their friendship networks Excuse me, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Sir, I have put similar question in the chat box. Could you please check that? Uh, which question? Uh, of clustering you... coefficient. In the yeah. chat box. It's an image, basically. So, uh, one question is about density. Yeah, yeah. clustering similar coefficient. Answer. Yeah, so clustering coefficient for a node or node 5 in the following graph. So you have node 5 and node 5 is connected to 7, 8 and 9. So uh, here actually uh, node 5, it should be uh, so they are not connect 7, 8 and 9 are not connected to each other. So it should be 0 in this case, but it 0 is not given as an option over here. Yeah. So in so the the, I, the right answer would be zero for this question. Yeah. So the options might be wrong here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so if you anyone have a. Uh, any question that is related to what I am discussing, you can just unmute and tell me that you have posted the question. Uh, I'll take a look or else I'll take a look at the chat box at the end of the discussion. Sir, can you please explain this once again, sir? The clustering coefficient part. Yes, sir. OK, so in a given network, the clustering coefficient basically measures of how well the friends of a particular node are connected. So if I ask what is the clustering coefficient of E, so I look at its friends. So the friends of E are F, B and D. So I take a look at how well F, B and D are connected. Now how it is, how well it's connected is measured by this ratio of what is the total number of friendship that is present among F, B, D and to the ratio in the denominator you have uh, the total, the maximum number of friendship that could have been possible among F, B and D. So if you look at F, B and D, the number of friendship present is basically one that is between F and D. And what could have possibly existed was three. That is one between F and B, one between B and D and another between F and D. So that could be three. So the ratio is one over three. So the clustering coefficient of E is three. So similarly, you calculate the clustering coefficient of F. So you look at the friends of F. Friends of F are E and D. And uh, how many friendships are present between E and D? That is one. And how many possibly could have existed? That is also one. So that's one over one. And therefore, and in the question, they have asked what is X? So you take the ratio of clustering coefficient of E. Uh, over clustering co coefficient of f that is one by three. So, uh, is that clear? Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. So one more doubt regarding clustering coefficient. Yeah, go ahead. So how many distinct values are possible for the clustering coefficient of a node with degree n? Oh, you have a node with degree n. Yeah, and how many distinct values are possible for clustering coefficient of that node with n degree? Okay, so n degree means this. So you have a particular node and the n degrees means it has n friends over here. So among how many uh, total? So the denominator would always be n over n minus 1 by 2 and the numerator among how many edges uh, it can exist between. So it could be from zero, there it could be one, it could be two till 
n n minus 1 by 2 so so the total sorry so it would uh, yeah so so you will have n into n minus 1 by 2 distinct values for the clustering coefficient if a node has degree n and you have no other information about the graph okay sir thank you yeah Can you repeat what you said? Got it, sir. Thank you. Uh, okay, all right. So, moving on to the next question, coming to week three. So, in week three, uh, coming to the first question, if A denotes the set of friends. Avnish has and B denotes the set of friends Bhavesh has. Which of the following describes their neighborhood overlap? Neighborhood overlap is basically neighborhood overlap. I'm abbreviating as NO is basically the number of mutual friends to total number of friends. Total friend number friends. So mutual friends is always the intersection that is the common friends that is friends to both Avnish and Bhavesh. That is A intersection B. And total number of friends is the total number of friends of uh, what Avnish has plus what Bhav Bhavesh has subtracting that what they have in common because the common friends would be counted twice if we add them so it would basically a union b so the uh, answer is uh, option c a intersection b over a union b so uh, there was some question in the chat box about uh, neighborhood overlap so i think someone asked find the neighborhood overlap of the edge connecting B0 and B2 in the graph P. So you have B0 and V2. OK, so what is the neighborhood overlap? So if you uh, look at this graph, so what is the con? If you consider V0 and V2, what is the number of mutual friends they have? Uh, they have V4 in common, they have V3 in common, and they have V1 in common. So uh, that is three mutual friends. And what is the total number of uh, friends they have? Is uh, they have one, two. So there are total of six friends. So from V0 to V5. So there are total of six friends. So it is three over six. So that would be 0 0.5. So neighborhood overlap is 0 0.5. I think as we ask this question. So do we even have to consider the notes no. themselves? No, so when you count the number of friends of V0, let's say, so you have how many friends does V0 has? V0 has uh, five friends, right? Yes. yes. In including V2. Yeah. And how many... Uh, friends uh, does v2 have v2 four. have four so but uh, you and how so that is total nine and how many mutual friends they have three so nine minus three is six so that is six friends so that okay. is the denominator okay so OK, so. Mm. All right, let us move on to question number seven. Uh, sorry, this is the second question from week three assignment. So while implementing the Girvan Newman algorithm on a certain graph G, you observe that edge E1 gets removed after edge E2. What can you comment about them? So what the Girvan Newman algorithm basically does is. A1 
So what it does is ranks edges in descending order of of betweenness and remove the top and remove from the top and remove edges from top of the list. So it first removes the node with the highest betweenness and so on. So what it ev eventually comes to is two disconnected components. Now they are asking us what we can say about E1 and E2. So first that no edge E1 gets removed. So E1. If we measure the betweenness. Of E1 should be greater than E2. So what do we mean by betweenness? So betweenness, whenever you hear the word betweenness, it is a measure of uh, like how frequently that edge is being used uh, to move from one part of the graph to another. It's basically the number of shortest paths that passes through that edge. So option C is the right answer for that question. So E1 has more shortest paths passing through it. So what does this mean that you have a graph? You pick any two nodes and you find the shortest path between them using, let's say, Dijkstra's algorithm and you check that whether the shortest path passes through this edge E1 or not. And you do it for all possible uh, edge nodes in the graph and you find what is the how many number of shortest path passes through an edge. So that is a measure of its betweenness. So whenever you hear the word betweenness, you relate it to highways. So highways are roads that connects to uh, cities or two states. So, so betweenness are like highways in a network. So and it basically is a measure of the number of shortest path passing through it. And in this quest, in the Girvan Newman's algorithm, the highest betweenness edge is plugged before and then followed by a lower betweenness edge until the graph has disconnected compound. So E1 has more short, shortest path passing through it than E2. So option C is the right answer for this question. So in this question, uh, it has been said that E2 gets, uh, sorry, E1 gets removed after E2. So the betweenness of E2 should be higher, right? Oh, wait, wait, yeah, I think you're right. So you observe that edge E1 gets removed after edge E2. Yeah, yeah, you are right. E, e, uh, yeah, so uh, my bad, my bad. I think it would mean that uh, E2 uh, gets removed after E2. So E2 has higher betweenness than E1. So you're right. So option B is the right answer. I read it in the wrong order. So like first the uh, edge with the higher. One has the highest. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a, uh, node A1 uh, has the highest uh, value as uh, between as uh, greater than uh, compared to A2, then uh, it will remove and the uh, shortest path must be passing through it. Yeah, so uh, first uh, you remove E2. So when you execute this algorithm, you find out the betweenness of all the edges and then you remove the edge with the highest betweenness. So if E2 is removed first, then E2 must be higher in the list compared to E1. So yeah, therefore E2 has higher betweenness than E1. Answer must be D or only B, sir. 
uh, as i so, think uh, answer answer must be d both a and c even has higher between s than e2 even get removed after a2 uh e so it gets removed in the descending order right in the given human algorithm so e2 was removed first before e1 there is confusion sir um one this week three just give me one minute because during a solving session we have a take the answer a d both a and c uh, so c given human algorithm removes it in descending order so if uh, e2 had see so if a was correct that e1 has higher between s than e2 then E1 would have been removed before E2, and E1 uh, has higher between us. It means that A and C are basically the same statements. So A and C are not different uh, statements. So and D would mean that E1 has higher between us. But as she just pointed out, uh, I think yeah. So it is the E2. Having higher betweenness would lead to E two being removed before E one. So I read it wrong. So here, if you see, read the question. It says that E one gets removed after E two. So E two was removed first, and it arranges the edges in a descending order. So therefore, E two has higher betweenness. Uh, I have checked with the notes. I think it is right. option b is the right answer in the solutions sheet did you check get anything else I, in the solution sheet that i have option b is the right answer guys yeah just i am checking sir yeah uh, which week assignment sorry this 